I am going to explain the different models of uh, cognitive mind and here how the different scientists as well as philosophers they have been explaining or they have explained the concept of cognitions mind or consciousness indifferently and generally cognition is one of the important aspect of the human mind because it involves issues like how we acquire knowledge how we store knowledge how we retrieve knowledge and how we use all these kinds of knowledge with the help of our cognitive system if we use cognitions every time and acquire bit of uh, information place it in uh, or use of information in some ways uh, then cognition must include a wide range of mental processes and cognition is not so simply we are only acquiring knowledge or storing knowledge or something it is more than that through cognitive processes we can achieve many kind of things in the world and we can do many kind of discovery with the help of our cognitive faculties and here i am concerned only in the case of human cognitions not in the case of animal cognitions but in the case of human cognition you will find there is a one kind of development is there because of that we uh, are rational being or rational animal than any other beings there is a change is there in the in the human cognitive processes but not in the case of animality or in the case of any other beings uh, like in um, beings like plants and uh, uh, animals uh, cognition generally is a process in which information is encoded in the brain by receiving signals from the outer world through the sense organs sometimes even if we may not get the knowledge from the outer world it knowledge also arises from the inner world from the inside it emerges the knowledge and it represent a new idea and through the cognitive activities we explains our creativity uh, abilities it is seems that cognition is largely different from that of therefore it seems that human cognition is largely different from that of other animals because of the enormous richness of the uh, human cognitive processes there are different models of understanding of cognitive mind and there are different scientists different philosophers they have explained the cognitive model of mind even if in the last lectures you have seen the how functionalists are explaining in the how the mind is functioning in that way they are explaining the mind consciousness in different ways but here also you will find some of the scientists and the philosophers they have been uh, they are explaining uh, consciousness or mind or cognitions in the similar way and uh, some of the uh, things which i shall be repeating in this uh, sections to make you uh, more uh, clear on the cognitive aspects of mind or consciousness aspects of mind or the importance of mind in the scientific realm now we'll go through different model of understanding cognitive mind there are many models which i have put uh, before you and the one is neuroscientific model psychological model uh, representational model computational model isomorphic model multiple realizable model multiple draft model and subpersonal model and all these models are um, plays very important role in explaining uh, cognitive mind let us see first neuroscientific model of mind uh, neuroanatomy is the study of the nervous system structures and is concerned with identifying the parts of nervous systems and it describing how the parts are concerned to each uh, other here neuroanatomy can be made at many descriptive levels according to neuroscientist investigations can be made at two levels and uh, this is the neuroscientific view and uh, firstly gross neuroanatomy and uh, is and th this gross neuroanatomy is about general structures and connections uh, whereas fine neuroanatomy is the main task that describe the components of individual neurons and uh, secondly histology is the study of tissue through the dissections and the primary concern of uh, neuroanatomy is to 
ideally connect the patterns of connectivity uh, in the nervous systems, lay out the mechanism that uh, allows formations to get from one place to uh, another. For neuroscientist, uh, this neuroanatomy is the analogy of cognitions uh, and uh, cognition is nothing through which we are explaining this neuroanatomy that is uh, cognitions. While explaining neuroscientific approach to co cognitions, Francis Kick, a famous neuroscientist as well as a neurophilosopher uh, and he said that the brain does not make a distinction between hardware and software as a computer does. Theories have made these distinctions are unfortunate. What Crick is trying to uh, show is that the way even if functionalists have ex explained about mind or uh, consciousness is that there is a they have done one kind of distinction that is software and hardware. But in the case of uh, neuro scientists there is a, uh, this kind of distinction is not there in the software or hardware or the neural is something a neural process is something, but neural and neural process both the things they go together and the way they have done the distinction is one kind of unfortunate and I think for, uh, for Crick it is not uh, acceptable and Crick argues for the for theories of cognition that are strictly tied to biology uh, which implicitly force him to argue uh, for the study of simple cognitive acts such as visual word detections rather than the complex acts such as uh, paragraph comprehensions or etcetera. Uh, for neuroscientist especially for um, Crick, mental actions depends uh, on the psycho neurological factors underlying uh, in it. Uh, any kind of mental actions whatever we are doing or acting it depends upon the neurological factors underlying it. Uh, no mental actions is without these factors which determine the mental history of uh, an agent. Although Crick's general discussion is on the concept of uh, conscious thought, virtually all the specific studies he cites deal with visual cognitions. For him, it might be most profitable to deal with vision entirely within the field of neuroscience. While dealing with language comprehension in, in terms of psychological machines has no known neural basis. Therefore, for him cognition is a multi dimensional process which needs a many sides approach and neuroscientist claims that there is a process happening in the brain that they have measured in terms of 40 hertz. The 40 hertz process is nothing but the consciousness. Consciousness uh, is accessible in this 40 hertz level, otherwise all other level it is not uh, measurable and they, they have measured consciousness and the way they have they are measuring consciousness it is uh, they are quantifying the consciousness and this uh, quantified consciousness is explainable in terms of neuroscientific model. Now, we will see the um, uh, psychological model of mind the psychological approach to cognition is defined as the psychology of understanding and knowing. It is a study of mental processes. It is concerned with the way we take in information, the outside world and how we make sense of that information and what we use we make of it. According to Groom, one of the famous psychologists for him, and there have been a three main approaches to the study of cognitive psychology. namely experimental psychology, computer modeling and cognitive neuro uh, psychology. Firstly, experimental psychology involves in the use of psychological experiments on human subjects to investigate the ways in which we perceive or learn or remember or think. In this process, the experimental psychology is concerned about how the human mind uh, remember the things. Uh, secondly, cognitive psychology is the use of computer model of cognitive uh, processes and this approach involves uh, 
the simulation of some aspects of human cognitive functions by writing computer programs, you know to test our models of possi or possible brain functions. And this model uh, especially many brain scientists they have been trying to study the human brain processes and uh, what he or she thinks and uh, how the mind is uh, functioning uh, with the help of a different kind of advanced program they are trying to investigate on the human cognitions. And lastly cognitive neuropsychology is concerned with the activities of the human brain during the cognitive processing and this is one of the important aspect whenever uh, we, we are doing any kind of activities and during that period how our mind is functioning, how we are remembering, how we are reacting to a, a particular uh, situations. In that level this approach of cognitive psychology explains the psychological level of cognitions. Although uh, cognitive neuropsychology plays uh, one of the vital role uh, in the case of uh, neuroscientific uh, model of mind, because uh, as you have seen that uh, the neuroscientific model is trying to explain uh, this cognitive psychology with the help of uh, neuropsychology. Therefore, in another way uh, in different angles both the cognitive neuropsychology and the neuro uh, scientific model of my mind or cognitions are going together to investigate on mind. Now, you have to see the representational model of mind is one of the important model of mind. The representational model of mind there are many scientists they have explained it in a different way. Some scientists they have explained it syntactical, some scientists they have explained it semantical uh, way. But here I will be explaining you know, how the syntactic way the uh, cognitive system is explainable through representations. The representational theory of cognition tries to show how our knowledge of the world is represented in the mind and when human knowledge is represented in an abstract format uh, we call its propositions. Thus, all knowledge representations take place in language. Here the language is the one of the main things which plays important uh, role to uh, representational model of mind. Uh, the representational theory studies the mental representations in a formal language called the language of thought by J. D. Fodder. And this language of thought I will discuss in the next lectures very clearly. Uh, let us see first what is this representational model of mind. A representation is something that stands for something else. For example, the words of any human language are forms of representations because they stand for objects, events and ideas. Words are an abstract representations because the relation between a word and the object signified or the idea it uh, represents is uh, arbitrary. Words in our uh, language can refer to the same objects and ideas and in few cases the reference of a word cannot be predicted from its auditory form. Uh, there are many words even if you say something which uh, has no representations, you can say even if golden mountain which have visual representation, actual representation is uh, not it, it, it has no existence, but you can have some kind of picture in mind in your uh, that there is something called uh, golden mountain which is exist in this world, but there is nothing called uh, such as golden mountain in the real or empirical sense. But in the case of uh, mental representations, mind preserves information about objects or events in the world. Uh, for example, when we have a mental representation of table and this representation preserves location of uh, the object in the space, it supports the number of abilities including imaging the place, estimating the distance from the memory and so on many kind of things is happening. Whenever I am looking at a chair, there is a distance is there on which spatial temporality existing, how much uh, the visibility is that chair and the various kind of angles that we have to see in the case of uh, representational uh, model of mind. And this mental representation is necessary because human behavior cannot be explained without specifying how individual represent the world uh, to uh, themselves. And therefore, this representation model 
plays important role in the case of this Jerry Fodor and this representation model plays one of the vital role to explain uh, cognitive cognitions or consciousness and uh, let us see you now computational model of uh, mind uh, according to cognitive scientist all cognitive process are computational process and and all computational process require internal representations as the medium of uh, computations and then the nature of this medium is such that the internal representation are symbols the symbols systems facilitate the computational processes and the computational process is a kind of uh, symbolic way can be explainable and because without the help of symbolic system it's very difficult to explain any kind of uh, computational model of mind therefore the computational uh, modeling in cognitive science and artificial intelligence has profoundly affected how human cognition is viewed and studied computational level of cognitions shows that the mind is a computer which is based on a symbolic informations in symbolic uh, computations the abstractions provided are symbols and rules uh, with the help of these symbols and rules we are explaining about uh, uh, the human this computational model of mind but according to the classical computational theory of mind uh, mental representations are symbolic structures uh, and the mental processes consist in the manipulation of these representations according to symbolic algorithms as computation is based on symbolic rules and herbert simon is one of the founder of computer science discusses the nature of cognitions while constructing models of human mental activities according to him cognition is a mental processes based on mechanism of the brain the brain mechanism can be studied by neurophysiology and further he argues that a human brain functions like a computer so that the human cognitive processes are computational in nature and therefore if we manage to program a computer to play chess we may have to discover how human thought proceeds thus uh, simon argues for a sharp distinction between brain as a physical system and the programs the brain executes and therefore he urges to concentrate our attention on the program because program is one thing through which we can able to study the uh, human cognition or consciousness or human mind this is the one of the important aspect of scientific way of investigating the human uh, knowledge and consciousness and a great deal of modern study of cognition depends inside that uh, representational level and neural level events can be linked through the development of intermediate computational theories of thought and uh, even if the both uh, simon and uh, alan newell and uh, both of them are trying to show that uh, this insight is based upon a rather sophisticated notions both of thinking and the computation as activities that are carried out by physical symbol systems um, as we know a machine or a computer is a physical device that manipulates electric signals and that stand for the symbols in the equations the physical system translate signals into a symbol uh, systems uh, here computers and engineer paper pencil devices are general computing system in the sense that they can in principle compute uh, any computable function that is definable by symbol systems in order to actually compute something the physical device must be given a set of instruction which are stated in terms of symbols thus computing systems operate systems of symbols to arrive at particular results and we have to note that algorithmic is not stated in terms of the physical machine because the physical operation that achieve the primitive function such as writing down multiplying and subtracting have not been specified but according to newell and uh, in the modern way of explaining uh, is that a physical symbol system has the necessary and sufficient 
means for general intelligent actions and um, they have been defining. When you pay a computational model it can be called as physical symbol systems. It has a physical a hardware is there, symbol is there and it is a completely a system is there. Therefore, it is a physical symbol system. Instead of calling a system a Turing machine, we can call as a Turing machine, we can call as a physical symbol system and we can call as a computer and we can call as a robotic systems. Uh, let us see all these uh, definitions on computational model of mind very clearly. By necessary, we mean that any system that exhibits general intelligence will prove upon analysis to be a physical symbol system. By sufficient, we mean that any physical symbol system of sufficient size can be organized further to exhibit general intelligence actions. And lastly, by general intelligence actions, we wish to indicate the same scope of intelligence as we see in the human actions. And here, Simon and Newell are trying to say that there is no distinction between human intelligence and this computational intelligence. There is one kind of uh, synthesis that synthesis one kind of the similar way of function the way even if the human mind is functioning the same way is in the case of a robotic system or a computer system is functioning there is no distinction between mind and machines according to this physical symbol system thesis and thus for physical symbol systems as uh, we have seen gives rise and intelligent actions because of the presence of the symbol manipulations according to rules even if whenever we do any kind of activities, we follow some kind of rules and regulations and we do also uh, we express um, everything else through language and which are the symbolic representation of the world. In that way, that representation is there in the case of computer systems and it is not necessary to explain mind in some different way and therefore, mind can be explainable in computational term. The physical symbol system hypothesis plays an important role in showing computational levels of cognitions. Because the symbols system uh, hypothesis implies that the symbolic uh, behavior of uh, humans arise because he or she has the characteristics of a physical symbol systems. Uh, hence, the success in modeling uh, human behavior on the symbol systems becomes an important part of the evidence for this hypothesis. The hypothesis helps research in cognitive psychology also. Uh, research in Information processing psychology involves two kinds of empirical activities. Now, firstly, it conducts observations, experiments on the human behavior in task require intelligence. Secondly, it formulates the hypothesis about the symbolic process found in the human systems. Not only the psychological experiments required to test the human behavior, but also uh, they point out uh, the experiments uh, which are come out new idea of the design and uh, construction of physical symbol systems. And um, even if uh, with the help of this computational model, Herbert Simon and uh, Newell and many of them have been trying to explain a computational model of mind. For them, the mind is a computational process and consciousness is nothing but a computational process and the brain process is nothing but a computational process and uh, whatever is happening in the human brain is not nothing but a computational process that can be analyzable in in mechanistic way uh, with the help of this physical symbolic systems. And um, let us see now another model isomorphic models of mind. According to this isomorphic model of mind, two systems are functional isomorphic if there is a correspondence between the state of one and the state of other that preserve the functional relations. This model I have already explained in the functionalism uh, in the last lectures. Uh, remind you uh, I am introducing this model of cognition and mind here. This isomorphic model is one kind of functional isomorphic according to Putnam. Uh, there is a isomorphic between mind and a machine. This functional isomorphic hold due to the causal capacity of, of functional state of the machines. And for example, uh, when I have a pain, there is a neurophysiological process corresponding to the mental state because of the firing of the C fiber, the brain identity follows as there is a functional identity between the two. Whenever there is a C fiber firing is happening, then I am getting pain. 
and here there is the identity between the identity between the one state to another state and there is also identity between mind and machines. Therefore, there is no distinction between mind and machines. Thus, the identity between the mental state and the physical process of the brain establishes from the functional point of view uh, that is in functional terms the brain state is isomorphic with the mental state that is to say that there is the identity between the software that constitutes the program and the hardware of the machines which uh, helps the software to be realized in the machines and here machine can realize this software and software can realize this hardware and there is one kind of identity relations between mind and machines and uh, even if mind can be explainable in terms of mechanistic way and uh, uh, machine can be explainable in terms of um, mentalistic way. Now, let us see uh, the another model of mind is multiple re realizability model of mind and this model I have already explained in the uh, last lectures on functionalism. Uh, there can be indefinitely many different physical properties which constitute the realization of the same functional property. However, it is also true that the same physical state can realize different functional properties at different times or in different circumstances or in different cases. What is the motto for explaining this uh, multiple realizable model of mind in this way? Uh, the functional state are multiple realizable in the sense that a functional state cannot be identical to any particular physical realization of it. For example, someone could write a program using two completely different types of a computer which use different sorts of hardware to run the same program. Here, they are trying to say that there are different hardware, but one software program, but one software program can be implemented in different kind of software uh, systems. In this sense, the program said to be multiple realizable, any number of computers may be used to realize same uh, program. Functionality takes states of minds and mental property to be a functional states and properties. Mental properties are realizable by, but not identical with material properties. Because uh, as I told you that functionality, there is no identity between the hardware and the software. In the same way, mental properties are different from the physical property for them. And the, here the mental properties are they are explaining in terms of functional properties. For example, the same mental property, the property of being in pain may be realized by one property in a human being and to a certain extent by another property invertebrate. And here for the functionalist, if someone has now a particular pain, then he or she can imagine that this pain is realized through a particular neural states and that neural state has an identifiable mat material structure and uh, this may be studied by a low level hardware science like neurobiology or like even if the hardware in the computer systems. In the case of uh, neuroscience we can see from the neurobiology, but in the case of computer model we can see from the hardware systems. Therefore, for functionalism what makes the state a realization of pain uh, is not its material con constitution, but it is occupying a particular kind of causal role within our nervous systems. Multiple realization thus implies that there is a higher level of functional description of physical state in terms of their causal role, which abstract from their low level physical constitutions. It is with such functional properties that mental properties can be. Uh, identifiable. Here, this multiple uh, reality model is one of the was the one of the finest model to develop high uh, technical system because philosophical model behind any kind of uh, computer systems and which philosopher uh, have tried to understand the human mind, then they have tried to implement in the system. And that this multiple realized model is now possibility is there. Even that possibility may not give a sufficient explanation of the uh, human mind they, that may give sufficient explanation on uh, machines. Now, we will see multiple draft model of mind and sub personal model of mind. These two model has been advocated by Daniel C. Dennett and Dennett is one of the propaganda of a functionalistic model of mind or a mechanistic model of mind and he has been arguing that 
man can be explainable in terms of machines. Let us see this PPT. The multiple dot model given by uh, Dennett suggests similarity between the function of the human mind and those of the computer. The brain system functions in relation to different subsystems. So, there are multiple draft which operate within an artificial systems. According to Dennett, such an analogy is beneficial because it analyzes consciousness from the point of view of the language processing. This is given important precisely in the sense that a linguistic or language speaking being is considered not only as a conscious being, but also a rational being. Even the robots as information processing system can also be characterized as intelligent systems. According to Dennett, if we see and he has been arguing that we are machines and we are just very sophisticated machines that uh, has been organized molecule instead of metal and uh, silicons and we are conscious. So, there can be conscious machines like us. It is even if a machine is a component of material object in the same way human beings are also component of material objects. In this way, this material components are existing in both the cases and if anything at all the so called mind is there and it can be explainable in terms of machines. So, the human thought processes and uh, language processing in the artificial systems are uh, analogous uh, to each other. In the case of conscious thought process, we are aware of thoughts at the same time there is a psychochemical processes uh, which goes uh, in our brain. And Dennett's functional analysis of consciousness is divided into uh, two parts. Firstly, subpersonal view of consciousness and the multiple draft model of consciousness. And both these models plays vital role you know, to explain the mechanistic model of mind. The subpersonal model explains consciousness and other uh, mental activities through the help of neurological states and uh, process of the uh, organism. Whereas, in the case of multiple draft model if we see it discusses how an artificial system behave intelligently and if we see if you make the difference between these two models and then one model is explaining from the macro level and one level is explaining in the sub personal level. According to this multiple draft model all varieties of perceptions indeed all uh, varieties of thought or mental activities are composed in the brain by parallel and uh, that is also a multi track process of interpretations and elaboration of sensor inputs. Uh, that is to say that it functions different uh, multiple uh, draft as well as in the parallel and it is like a criss cross relationship among the neurons and uh, this even if one neurons functions in different uh, directions in different uh, situations. It is not like that one neuron is functioning for one activities another neuron is functioning for another activities. Even if one action there must be many neurons uh, which are giving rise the conscious experience and uh, Dennett offers a functional explanation of consciousness at the sub personal uh, level and this sub personal level because this sub personal level is concerned about the particular neurons. And, uh, he says that this subpersonal theory is proceed by analyzing a person into an organization of subsystems like organs, routines, nerves, faculties, components uh, of even atoms uh, like that. And it also attempted to explain the behavior of the uh, whole person as the outcome of the interaction of these subsystems. The subpersonal level of consciousness tries to uh, explain now uh, how the human beings are system of organism. Uh, now, the question is how the system is being constituted and how the various functions involved in different physiological parts of the uh, organism function together. Uh, the, this is one of the important problem for sub personal level, but uh, Dennett says that uh, the, this functional structure would help us in defining the capacity involved in causing consciousness of what we call 
conscious behavior. Therefore, a state of consciousness is simply one which exhibits certain characteristics pattern of causal relation to other states, both mental and physical. And here he has been trying to say that the, the relationship between mind and uh, even if the body or even if mental things and the physical things are existing in a causal relations. Therefore, all the level of cognitions and the, which we have discussed are not universally accepted. There are different kinds of model we have seen, even if psychological model to computational model, isomorphic model, multiple realizability model, multiple draft model, sub personal model, all these models are not acceptable. Although they have explained uh, differently about the human mind and about the consciousness, but those are not acceptable really you know to explain the conscious experience because which need different kinds of explanations and uh, that different kinds of explanations is possible with the help of philosophical um, clarifications and this philosophical clarifications will give one kind of tentative explanation on mind or consciousness uh, even if here i have discussed varieties of cognitive uh, mind, but I have not explained about the connectionist model of mind which is also part of the varieties of mind, but that I will be explaining in different uh, uh, sections, special reference to folk psychology. Uh, but if you see, uh, there are many kind of reactions to uh, these uh, varieties of cognitions and uh, according to David Chalmers, a computational basis of cognition can be challenged in two ways. First, it can be argued that uh, computation cannot do what cognition does, that a computation simulation cannot reproduce a human cognition, because the causal structure in human cognition goes beyond what a computational description can do. Uh, secondly, computation might capture the human capacities, but something more is required to replace the human capacity. The human cognition can be uh, applied to what is known as memory attention, pattern recognition, language problem solving and etcetera. The most important aspect of the human mind is the selection of information, uh, information of further proceeding and storage. And the information available during the moment except sleep and unusual occasions is vast and complex and uh, we are constantly bombarded by our senses, because in the case of cognition, sense surveillance plays very vital roles. And we get knowledge not only from the inside, it is because of the sense experience we get knowledge from the outside also and both the things are mutually supplementing each other. All the external senses gives us information which the mind deals with a different stages and the cognition is the output uh, produced after a long process of getting uh, the inputs. And here, Although this mechanistic, all these uh, uh, variety of co cognitive mind or functionalistic model of mind uh, are explaining about the mind in different ways, they are giving a way to explain consciousness and mind. But this explanations uh, has some kind of limitations that we will see uh, later on. Although these models uh, help us to study the human mind, human cognitions and there are cognitive disorders and uh, this may help for scientific community to explain something in, in definite way, but um, in the case of if you see really the philosophical explanation of uh, consciousness or mind, it has uh, different kind of explanations. Thank you.